What's up everybody, I'm Jonathan with Boston Collectors and welcome back to the channel. If you're new, welcome to you as well. Today we're excited to unbox and review the Sideshow exclusive Boba Fett arena suit. To begin, we have the multi-blue colorway which almost matched the Attack of the Clones releases. However, Hot Toys decided to invert the color since this is a comic inspired figure from War of the Bounty Hunters. As always, all of the information about the figure can be located on the cigar band as well as an extra posing idea found on the side portion of the band itself. If that isn't enough, you also have an extra pose on the front of the cigar band as well. And yes, we still have the reflective Star Wars engraved logo on the front. We also have the reflective Sideshow exclusive sticker on the front of the box as well. Hot Toys also added the warning standard figure information in the locations of their flagship stores on the back of the box. Before we dive into the box though, we couldn't let you go without the main photo of the figure in all its glory. Oh, and the bottom of the box. <laughs> Getting into it though, we have the insert card for the figure. These are typically shown throughout Hot Toys' promotional material with a few extra Photoshop effects on top. Something to frame or have signed if you're into that. As always, if you enjoy what you see so far, consider liking and subscribing to the channel. We have plenty more unboxing and reviews on the way if you're interested. With all of that out of the way, let's go ahead and jump into the accessories. Straight out of the box, the arena suit is equipped with a pair of relaxed hands. Both are the same copy versus one being somewhat altered as well. Having a pair makes it easier for a lot of us who'd like more of a simple pose or simply holding an item in hand. Next up, we have a pair of gripping hands for the battle axe. These aren't your standard C gripping hands though, so there's a slight angle to them to keep in mind for while posing. As always, I'm just glad to see we have a pair versus having one for a random hand. Also, we have a pair of fists included in the box. Boba's no stranger to hand-to-hand -to -hand combat, right? Not only that, posing him with other accessories as if he's about to shoot his whistling birds, activate his flamethrower, or other tools in his arsenal could look really good in your display. We have a pair of left gesturing hands, which could provide a different relaxed appearance. I can't say I'm too upset with this, but I'm always looking forward to left and right pairs. Regardless, both hands could work in a multitude of ways, providing a different take in your display. As for his weapons, we're going to kick things off with his battle axe. There's a great amount of detail throughout the axe in terms of weathering and texture. There isn't a way to store it on the figure apart from being in hand, so keep that in mind before finalizing your purchase. Also, if you're a Detolf owner, the axe can fit in your display vertically, but not straight across. Keep it at about 90 degrees and you should be set though. All in all, it's a great looking weapon. Lastly, I wanted to save the trigger hands for later. The figure does come with a left and right pair for both the pistols and his rifle. Speaking of the rifle, it's the same design from the Empire Strikes Back Boba Fett. I mean, featuring the black with the gray contrasting colors, of course. It looks great though, even with the slight grayish bluing around the barrel of the rifle. Nope, the shoulder strap is not included in the box nor on the rifle itself. As for the pistols, two are included with the figure, but there's only one holster on the right side of his hip. Again, the design of the pistols are both similar to what we saw previously on the Empire Strikes Back Boba Fett, apart from the obvious color changes, of course. And unfortunately, smoke effects are not included with the pistols. Next, we have the Jetpack Adjustment Tool, the Sonic Beam Weapon, the Anti-Security Blades, and his Survival Knife. With Hot Toys' instructions, they mention placing all of the items in the pockets you'll see me put them in. Hmm. 
Moving on to the jetpack, like the weapons mentioned earlier, this is also the same design from the Empire Strikes Back Boba. One thing to note though, the rocket cannot come off of the figure. It feels as if it's glued down and you're not meant to remove it. The instructions also don't show it either. Hot Toys is holding true to the old school latch design for their jetpack. However, they also included magnets on the back plate and the jetpack itself. The texturing on it is raised and it really does come across as battle damage versus printed on damage. It's got a nice feel to it. Also, the thrusters are adjustable. So, I personally consider the cape as an accessory. I wrestle with the idea of keeping it here or in the figure overview section. I figure, why not here? Anyway, there's a black and gray colorway featuring a tattered appearance at the bottom of the cape. Not only that, we also have wiring along the top and side portions of it as well. The cape is also held down by a small piece on the shoulder, so be careful when posing. If you're able to get that lifelike appearance out of the cape in the wind, then you're all set. Me personally, I like for it to drape and I love having the wires included for me to sell the look a little bit more. Even with the jetpack on, it looks really good and matches the overall appeal of the figure. Again, note the tattered portion of the cape. I love how that came out. The base design is actually something we've seen before. The last one was actually seen with Pennywise, even though it's an altered top design. It's very light and hollow with a slight sandy texture on top. As for the nameplate, it's kind of bland. Perhaps the comic title would have been cooler? Eh. Anyway, I also would have liked a little dimension on the top portion of the base. Maybe a few raised cracks, sticks, I don't know, something. As for the stand, they gave us a flight pole, albeit a rusty flight pole. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> there's a twisting method for applying this to the base. Once you're done, add the waist grabber and you're all set. If you have other accessories laying around from Django Fett, Boba, or the Mandalorian, all of them could work for more contrasting colors. I'm not sure why some of these effects weren't included, because not everyone can afford to buy other figures to supplement the accessories for another. Regardless, all of these would make your arena suit fet stand out a lot more with the punchy effects of the fire, the brighter appearance of the Camtono, or so on, if you have them. There isn't really a lot to go over with Boba's helmet. It's straight to the point for the most part, with a few unique changes. On the back we have the ventilation system, which is painted and weathered. Also, we have the obvious dent in the helmet, the visor, and his rangefinder. If you have Django Fett, I would say the range of motion is slightly better here, since there isn't plastic along the bottom of the helmet, barring the posability of it. If you don't have Django, but you own a Mandalorian figure, the range of motion won't be the same as those. Regardless, you can get a respectable amount depending on what you're going for. Even though the colors appear mundane, I do love the contrast of the matte texture finish on the cheekbone of the helmet. As with all Mandalorians, the rangefinder is posable. Lastly, I figured I'd use a portrait for the figure. Unfortunately, you have to prop the portrait on the body, and that might not be the safest choice. <laughs> However, when we actually apply it to the neck joint, uh, it doesn't come across all that well. All in all, if you have a FET, you know what you're getting in terms of this helmet. It's nothing new here apart from the paint. So, what is Arena Suit Boba Fett? Essentially, it's a black version of the Empire Strikes Back Boba Fett. Without drawing this segment out for too long, I'll roll some clips and talk about the key features. Out of the box, the cummerbund on the waist was entirely off-center, and it required a little time to fix. 
It wasn't too difficult though. You just need tweezers and a little patience. The body feels pretty good as well. There are soft ratchets in the knees, which are double jointed as well as the elbows. The undersuit is a bit restrictive, but nowhere near as restrictive as Django Fett's. Pleather exists on the belt and pouches with an interesting pleather-like feel to the undersuit of the figure. Also, the hose on the right gauntlet is a hard fabric rather than the hose we saw with the Mandalorian release. My main concern with this figure for the most part will be the left gauntlet. You have to be careful when swapping hands. There's a long fragile piece sticking out and you could break it off if you aren't paying attention. Other than that, it looks and feels pretty good. To start, we have Jango Fett, the Death Watch Mandalorian, Luke Skywalker, Captain Rex, IG-11, Mando Boba, the Death Trooper, and last but not least, Darth Vader. In closing, this is definitely a figure for Boba Fett fans. If you're collecting all of the other suits, you can't pass this up. If you're a fan of the comics, this one is also definitely for you. However, if you're just picking this up for the hype, you will regret your purchase. I get it though, it's an all black suit and he looks cool. I agree because he does. You could get away with placing this figure behind Darth Vader and creating your own storyline alongside a few death troopers as well. All in all, it's very difficult to rate this figure because I can see both sides of the spectrum. However, from my side as someone who read the comic and know the origins of the suit, I love that collectors are able to pick this up. With everything included in the box, I'm going to rate this figure at a 9 out of 10. By the way, this is Natasha's figure though and not my own. Because I love the idea of it and not necessarily wanting it for my collection. If you're a FET fan and you're waiting to get yours in hand, you won't be disappointed. If you aren't a fan and gave in to the fear of missing out, you just might be. If you liked today's video, don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel. We'd appreciate it. Join our Discord and follow us over on our socials as well. Thank you so much for watching and we'll catch you on the flippity flop.